Yeah, welcome back to the Sportsbank Zone. Jamaican law firm Archer Cummings & Co. have formally written to the President and General Secretary of the Jamaica Football Federation. The first of two letters released on Tuesday, the 24th of October, was addressed to the JFF President Michael Ricketts, questioning the legality of the current board's existence. The letter highlighted that based on the JFF's adoption of a new constitution at its Congress in December 2022, the current JFF board's term, which began on September 15, 2019, should have ended in September this year. In a second letter dated Thursday, the 26th of October, JFF General Secretary Dennis Chung was requested to respond to electoral concerns related to the current membership of the Federation. This relates to the formation of entities after the stipulated deadline, which may be considered to become a part of the JFF's list of voting delegates. Mm. Joining us to explore the two issues at hand and maybe even so much more, yeah, Denzel Wilkes, former general manager of the Sports Development Foundation. He's now head of athletic development and training at the UWI Mona. And uh, he's joined by human resource specialist, Dr. Cecile Dennis. Lady and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to have you on the Sportsmax Zone. First of all, I want to get an understanding of your connection to the Real Solid Action team. I like the name, by the way, Real Solid Action. Um, and that team is led by Raymond Anderson, who we've had on this show before. So I want to get an understanding of your connection. Let the lady go first. <laughs> OK, thank you for having me. Well, you're not alone. A couple of persons have asked, um, what's your connection? So I'm actually a, a, a sports person. I, I represented Jamaica in table tennis. And uh, not just at the sport. I played with Sandra Retty and um, Sophia Vergon. In fact, in 1993, I was a part of that winning Caribbean champions team. So I've been connected with sports, but in 2007, I, as I, I held a marketing position with an organization, um, COK, and we actually took the sponsorship of the Champions Cup. Yeah. And, and out of that sponsorship, I developed a relationship with um, the JFF, with football, and subsequently, I was asked to sit on their marketing committee. I actually started, but unfortunately had to um, demit. So my association is a long one. With table tennis, I've been a part of administration, which, of course, gives you exposure to the other aspect of um, sports. So I guess Mr. Anderson thought I had some skills yeah. that would add value to this real solid action team, yes? Mm. Sir Wilkes. Well, <laughs> I have been around for a long time, over 50 years of the football game, and not to mention involvement in a number of sports. I've never played at the national level like my colleague here, but I really have been involved. And I, let me say that Mr. Anderson approached me while I was still at the Sports Development Foundation. and. Um, he asked me to join his team. I have developed my own perception as far as administration is concerned because for nine and a half years at the Sports Development Foundation, I had to do with interfacing with the administrative people across as many as 60 national sporting associations. And so I think I have an in-depth appreciation for the challenges that come with administration and in particular as far as football is concerned, I was asked by the current president of the JFF to serve on the technical committee some four to five years ago. So there you go. 
Yeah, so let's get right into the meat of the matter then and let's not skirt around the issues here. There is an election that is coming up um, for executive positions at the Jamaica Football Federation, of course, chief among those for the position of president of the Jamaica Football Federation. I think everyone knows by now across Jamaica and the Caribbean that Raymond Anderson is set to challenge Michael Ricketts, who is the sitting president. Michael Ricketts recently in an interview said that elections were will not be held this year, even though they are constitutionally due this year, and that it is likely to be held in January of 2024. You are saying that is unconstitutional and should not be the case. Bring us up to speed. So, yes, so all the actions um, of the JFF are guided by the Constitution. And this Constitution was, uh, we, we want to refer to it as a newly adopted Constitution. Um, it, within the Constitution, there are provisions for elections, and there is a stipulated tenure for every administration. This administration has a four-year tenure, and that tenure expired on September 14. Between September 14 and probably yesterday, there was no mention of the election date. And of course, there is a 60-day period which, in which um, you know, the election has to be announced and, the, and the day, it has to be held within the 60-day period. And our team, we were, we were really looking at what's happening, the dates, we were watching the dates, and realizing that if the election is not called by a specific date, then we're either going to be at New Year's Eve or we're going to be in 2024. Without any plausible explanation you know, as to why the elections were delayed, we raised the question. Uh, Denzel, you're about to say something? Go no, ahead. No, you were right. right. I just want to mention, wait, you just said that you were a part of the technical committee invited to do so by the current president, Michael yes. Ricketts. Yes. But you were suspended, weren't you? Oh, yes. Just recently, yes. I was suspended as a result of that imbroglio, we should call it, with um, Lauren Donaldson and the Ricky girls being, his contract not being renewed. Yeah. And I, of course, made certain utterances publicly. I still stand by them. But for my sins, I have been suspended. I'm it, pretty comfortable you, you, with you, that. You breached collective responsibility. No, I did not because the technical committee had not met and had not made any pronouncements. All we had was the general secretary calling in the coach and telling him that his contract was being renewed. So there was no collective decision taken. So I cannot be accused by any stretch of the imagination of breaching any um, collective responsibility. Yeah, <laughs> our understanding based on the number of delegates or the number of representatives that can vote, which has been increased from 13 to 56, mm -hmm. is that I heard the general secretary speaking on television a couple of weeks ago, and he was trying to explain why things were not in place for an election to be held this year. And it had something to do with the endorsement of some of the new bodies that are being added to the list. Can you explain his position? I, I know you don't agree with it, but for the benefit of our viewers, can you explain what Dennis Chung was, was saying? Well, I have to start by saying that must be a confession to dereliction of duty because he has been in the position, the administration has been there and even before him, and they knew when the new constitution came into being and there was more than enough time to ensure that the relevant Congress was held and everything else was put in place. So to suggest that things are out of place has to be on his part an admission of dereliction of duty. But in addition to that, the fact is we are aware that there is a deadline of June 30 for the various entities that are involved in the vote to have been properly registered. And I am not sure where he's coming from. So in short, I am not able to explain the, 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 the shenanigans of, of, the, of Mr. Chung. Yeah, let me see if I can put some context to, to, to what Sir Lance is referencing. So as, as you pointed out, Lance, before, 
there were 13 voting members, which were the parish associations only. That has now been increased to 56. They have been placed under three categories or three pillars, as they have been described. Um, pillar one would be the, the, the parish, parish associations yeah. who individually would have two votes each. So that would end up being 26 of the 56 votes. And then you have pillar two, which would be the clubs. Um, you have the top four Premier League clubs. You have the top four tier two clubs. So that would be eight votes. And then you have the top four women's clubs and the top four tier two clubs on the women's side. But there is no top two, sorry, there is no tier two women's competition. So I gather those votes will go to the top four women's teams, which yes. would make it eight. So that's 26 plus 16, 42. Mm -hmm. And then there is pillar three, which is where I'm gathering most of the issues mm -hmm. are, which are the affiliates of the Jamaica Football Federation. So we're now talking about the professional football Jamaica Limited, yes. who we know very well. We're talking about the Beach Soccer Association, the Referees Association, um, Past Players Association, Coaches Association, Inter-Secondary School Sports Association, and Intercol, um, seven, and they will come with two votes each. So that's 14, which will take you to the 56. Apparently, from what I'm understanding, ladies and gentlemen, is that some of these associations have been registered twice by different individuals. So... Let us take, for example, yes. the Beach Soccer Association. Yes. One was registered some years ago under a particular name, and one has been registered more recently on an, under another name. Um, so from what I understand, and again, you can correct me, there is to be a meeting soon to decide what will happen with the affiliates that, can I say, have been registered twice? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so let's take it from the Constitution. Yes. The Constitution have, has articles that speak to different um, points in the process of registration. Yes. All right, so art Article 12 mm -hmm. speaks about being an affiliate, being members. Yes. And then way down, there's an Article 83, mm -hmm. which... Is a, it's talk, it talks about transitioning, but it specifies a date by which mm -hmm. any of these entities who want to be recognized, they should be registered and, of course, submit their um, what is required to the JFF. Which is June, June 30, 30, 2023. Three. Yes. Let me ask you this question before you go any further. Is it true that if the election goes to 2024, then that June 30 date becomes irrelevant. From a review of the Constitution, we have not seen anything in the Constitution that eliminates that date or causes the date to be no longer in effect. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. Um, however, there, there is a process of accepting these members. Yes. But if the... If the, if the the members, the entities seeking membership were not registered and the process had not been completed before June 30, then they would not be eligible. Mm -hmm. However, I have to say however, there was something today mm -hmm. that suggested that the date had been changed. You mean the June 30 date? Yes. There is some information which has surfaced which suggests <laughs> that the date has been changed. However, where, where is that information coming from? Um, um, I I can't state the source. I can't state the source. But so there, this is not public knowledge. Several persons, several persons have the information, but I cannot confirm the source. Okay. But there is a suggestion that the date there there is a recommendation for the date to be changed. However, that change cannot be made by an individual. Mm -hmm. The recommendation cannot be made by an individual. Mm -hmm. It would have to be voted on by Congress. Mm -hmm. and, and not just the board now. No, it has to be Congress. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. 
can, can I ask a question quickly, Denzel and Cecile? Because it is my understanding that the current president, Michael Ricketts, would struggle to get votes from this pillar three, which we have just outlined. Um, is that your understanding as well, representing the Raymond well, Anderson group? Well, let's say we have heard the same thing too. <laughs> uh, one can't say what is the fact, but we have been advised and we have reason to believe that he is struggling to get a nomination from the group referred to as Pillar 3. And um, that may very well have to do with the kind of gymnastics that are taking place now. Because if everything was in place, as, as Cecile said, up to just about a day or two ago, there was nothing said about an election in circumstances where your term of office has really and truly ended. Now, we understand that you don't want to create a vacuum, and so you want to ensure that there is a Congress and an election before there is a change. But any decent administration would at least indicate that, OK, here are the circumstances. We are late, but these are the bases for that. We haven't heard that at all. And now we have the situation where we see people running in October to register organizations contrary to what is set out in the Constitution. Is, is what I'm hearing true <laughs> that there is a proposed meeting this week that the General Secretary is uh, meeting with a board that could fast track some of these registration issues? Well, we are sticking very close with our legal advisors. Yes. And our understanding is that, as Cecile just said, it's only a Congress that can change that situation in terms of the deadline of June 30 for the registration of the organizations. And that is our understanding. And that's what we are sticking to. We are watching very closely. We have heard of a meeting in the coming week, but we have heard of a board meeting. And our understanding is that it will take a Congress, which is much more yeah. authorized than a simple board. But what would your position be if this board meeting goes ahead and um, the Gen Sec and the board um, decides to go with the program that they, they, they now have re-registering these double regist registrar people. Yeah, affiliates. Yeah, you know, <laughs> what, what, would, what would, the, would that be a legal issue that you would contest? Uh, well, we can object. Anybody can object. Yes. Any club can object um, to any action that appears contrary to what the Constitution outlines. And if certainly if this team believes that whatever happens is outside of um, the ambit of the Constitution, then we will object. Which, which your letters to the GenSec and the uh, President um, clearly stated. Yes. That yes. there is an objection from, a legal objection from your standpoint. Yes, there, because the Constitution is a legal document. Yes. And every activity, every action has to be guided. And certainly for our team, any appearance, you know, that, that suggests that you, you are trying to deviate from what the Constitution says is something that we will object to. But again, we await the outcome. Um, you referred to two associations, mm -hmm. um, you know, double registration. Yeah. And um, we're not sure why. You mean beat soccer and referees? Yes, we're not <laughs> sure why. Well, but not sure let, let's, let's not skirt around, though, because our <laughs> understanding is that some of the late regist regist registration yeah. applications yes. are coming from the Ricketts supporters or people who would be backing Ricketts. Right. All right, let's, let's look at the beach. In the case of beach, yes. Yes. our understanding is that both registrations are late. One was in September of 2023 mm -hmm. and the other one in October of 2023. So th both of those are in breach of the June 30th deadline. In the cases of the others, well, in, in, in the case of the referee, I don't even know if there's really a registration yeah. because there's a referee association has been around, I think, since the 1990s. Yes. In the case but, of... But, but before mm, you go any further, mm. the Jamaica Football Federation, this administration, when they came into office, 
they put together a referees committee. Yes. And so the referees association was not um, acting in such a role for the period. But for voting purposes, that committee can't vote, so you now have to go back to the association. Yes, because I, my understanding is that the constitution contemplates the association mm. and not any special committee that is set up by the board. Yes. Mm. And in the, in the case of um, coaches, for example, we have a coaches association that was registered as far back as 2009, and we have another one that was registered in 2020. And in the case, the, the two thousand. And so you need mm -hmm. to now decide what trumps what. Exactly. Is it the two thousand and nine registration or is it the twenty twenty registration? But, yes. But, and but, and how could you have a yes. twenty twenty registration when a body but, already, already existed? Already existed. Since the O nine registration has yes. been Lane's been Blaine's body. That is well, and, yes. And the twenty twenty mm -hmm. registration is Speed's association. Absolutely. Rodal and, Speed and Speed is with Ricketts. That's our understanding. Mm. <laughs> I, I want to also make the point, right, and, and you, you can help us make this very clear, that the significance of the pillars is not just about getting majority of those 56 votes, but you have to get at least nomination. a nomination yes. from each Every pillar. pillar. So you need two nominations from pillar one, which is the parish associations, mm -hmm. one from pillar two, which um, the clubs, yeah. and one from pillar three, yes. the affiliates. Yeah, nomination and and has so to come from. if mm -hmm. any person is unable to get, let's say, a pillar three nomination, they cannot contest the election. Absolutely correct. 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 Absolutely mm -hmm. correct. Hence, what I referred to earlier on as shenanigans yeah. and last minute running around and trying to register organizations that are really trumped up. Yeah, Lance asked an important <clears throat> question earlier about where do you go from here. So let us say, um, and Michael Ricketts has said, that's the current president, the election will not be held this year. In a radio interview, he hinted at an early 2024 date. Is the real solid action team ready to take this matter to the next level? I know you've spoken about legal alternatives, um, but take this to CONCACAF and beyond that to FIFA. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, the statement that the election will not be held in 2023, it, it smacks off a bit of dictatorship in the sense that I don't know that a Congress has been called and an explanation provided to say certain <laughs> logistical problems make it impossible to have the elections. elections. If it is accepted that constitutionally the elections are due in 2023 and specific <laughs> circumstances suggest that you may not be able to make it, then the leadership ought to come in all humility, apologize to the stakeholders, and indicate that because of these circumstances, we are seeking the permission of Congress to yes. take the election. Yes. And yes, we are prepared to take it through to CONCACAF and ultimately to FIFA, if that is what is required. Denzel, yeah. I've, I've understood in recent months that there are FIFA representatives, mostly from the financial standpoint, overseeing the, the operations of the JFF offices at the moment. And my understanding is that uh, these FIFA representatives have been for a long time, for several months, constantly reminding the JFF that these pillars and these um, new registrations must be in place because yes. the Constitution yes. demands that the election has to be held by December and it has to be announced 60 days before, which means that the announcement should have happened like in the past week. Exactly. If they were meeting the yeah. timelines. Yeah. Right. And uh, there was a constant reminder from the FIFA representatives that they needed to ensure that these registrations were properly um, documented so that there would not be any delays or any hitch with regard to the scheduled yeah. elections from the JFF, which to me aligns with what you suggested earlier on, that the situation that we are now in, the JFF has to take responsibility for. Clearly. I can confirm that the FIFA does have a consulting person within the JFF as we speak. 
and he's there on behalf of FIFA and conducting not just a financial audit, but a governance audit. I mean, I have been actually contacted by the consultant because he had to verify whether or not I served on the technical committee and certain questions were asked of me regarding the operations of the technical committee. So I can confirm that there is a representative of FIFA operating within the office. It should also be noted, it's unfortunate, you know, the current president has been in office for approximately six years. Mm -hmm. The current administration has been on restricted funding by the FIFA for five years. There are two unfortunate things about that. The current administration did not inherit this situation. It started within this administration. In addition to that, it is my understanding that we now have a world record. No other country has ever been under restricted funding by FIFA for five years in succession. Yeah, just for the, the benefit of our viewers, restrictive funding from FIFA means that they haven't been satisfied with your financial operations, so they are restricting the funds that would normally accrue to your federation because of that. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Is that a large part of the reason or any part of the reason for the financial woes that the JFF continues to speak about? There can be so many thoughts as far as financial woes. First of all, do they really have financial woes? We were told, for example, that they received a certain sum from FIFA mm -hmm. to pay the girls. We had a figure of 1.2 million from the general secretary. We had a figure of 1.5 million from the president. The general secretary then proceeded to say that they cannot pay over the 20% that was due to the reggae girls because they can't pay what they don't have. My appreciation for simple arithmetic is that 20% of 1.8 which is what they were supposed to get, amounts to somewhere in the vicinity of $360,000. Now, if you receive $1.2 million, the calculation there suggests that you have more than $360,000. So you can't tell me that you can't pay what you don't have. There is something mm, not so correct about that statement. It's not mathematical, mm -hmm. right? And so one has to question, then we have a situation where they are not paid, in spite of being told at different times that this has been paid. And then, all of a sudden, the general secretary now announces, okay, they have now all been paid. So it means that at some point in time when you were saying that they had been paid, they had not been paid. What I can also tell you is that I have documentation which suggests that they are not yet, they have not yet completed payment to the coach whose um, contract was not renewed. I know that he has written to them, making a claim for funds outstanding to him, and indicating that if they do not pay up by a certain time, he will take legal action. So th th this this administration, which I have worked with at some point in time albeit voluntarily, and the technical committee has really been a bit of an embarrassment, even including to me as an yeah. individual. Yeah. I, I want to get quickly from, from you, Denzel. At what stage <coughs> did you make up in your own mind that you did not want to go forward with this administration? <laughs> we started having problems. I mean, I started questioning the administration going way back. We know the kind of follow-ups that were taking place with the previous general Define secretary. Define way back. Uh, we're going as far back as 2021 coming through 2022. Okay. We were, they were just making error after error after error. And in, at those times, I mean, I was in constant communication with the president in my capacity as manager of the Sports Development Foundation because it was causing an embarrassment. Wasn't there a point that as the, president, as the boss of the Sports Foundation, you withheld money from the JFF because of uh, some 
financial yes, issues. I had to. I, I was going to get there right away because yes. this had to do with Suriname when the team got stranded in Suriname and they had a match back in Jamaica by the Tuesday. And as it turned out, it, it seemed as if they weren't going to make it back for the match in time or if they were going to make it back, it would be just in time, no time to prepare and that sort of thing. And we had to make some really difficult arrangements to get the flight. We had to get a charter out of Mexico, that plane had to come to Jamaica to refuel and then go to Suriname. There were no funds available to do that. And everybody knows it was public knowledge. I had to literally utilizing the leverage of the Sports Development Foundation, ask Chris Williams for upfronting some funds so that we could do all of that. Having done that, the understanding is that the JFF should repay a portion of that sum which was found by Mr. Williams. And they went way beyond the time. This is the, 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 the going beyond the time as far as the elections are concerned. This seems to be a habit of this administration. They went way beyond the time. And as general manager of the SDF, I had to withhold their monthly subvention and indicate that if they did not pay up, we would utilize the monthly subvention to repay Mr. Williams. Mm. And, and so all of that took me to a point which said, I mean, this administration is incorrigible mm -hmm. because you are constantly working with them. And I, I mean, I can go into things like getting their, their, their financials and all of that. They're always behind with their financials. If I go back to my time at the, the Sports Development Foundation, it's a litany of woes. Yeah, yeah. Why have you stayed so long? With them? Yes. Love of football and hoping that something would happen that would turn things around. I mean, there are discussions I had with the president pleading, we brought him to the table at the Sports Development Foundation, himself and his general secretary, then Mr. Wint, sat around the board table with the board members and advised them and coerced them, you could almost, or cajoled the best, you know? <laughs> so it, it's been a long journey. Um, I contemplated many a time stepping away from the technical committee but I think I had a responsibility to stay in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I did, because in the circumstances for the selection of the coach for the reggae girls, you know, remember initially, Lauren Donaldson was not the chosen one, you know. Yeah. I was the lone <laughs> voice crying in the wilderness. Mm. And it is only the situation where Jonathan, what's his last name? Morgan. Morgan, Morgan yes. was engaged by Sheffield United why, and then was no longer available. He was their choice. Yeah. I was outvoted completely, but then I'm used to that. I mean, all the votes going back to Tapa Whitmore. I mean, I'm so used to being outvoted. I was like a beating stick on that committee, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, I. <laughs> So you started having some issues, as you pointed out, yes. in, in 2021, yes. um, there about, you have your concerns about um, whether the, the, the JFF really has the financial issues, woes, that they, that they point to. And it just sounds to me that you're at your wit's end now, that you feel this association just cannot continue, this administration cannot continue to run Jamaica's football? It would be a travesty. It would be, it would be so unfortunate after all that has taken place. There are some things that we don't even want to get into too deeply, but at the highest level of leadership, there's this dereliction that has taken place as far as the, 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 the whole court case is concerned. And it's not subjudic case, so I can mention it. And I'm not even talking about the, the, the decision that was taken, but I'm talking about just not paying any mind to the thing. I mean, my layman's understanding is that you're in effect in contempt of court. And then when you get the decision taken in absentia, you don't even make that effort to pay up. 
what kind of level give, give of irresponsibility. Give us more details of that, of that court well, case. Well, I'm that you're speaking of the judgment that was made against the incumbent president because of a case brought against him by one of his colleagues. And the court ruled that a payment was to be made. The thing was not contested, and that is dereliction. It having not been contested and you get a ruling against you in absentia, you then move to the next stage where you are now supposed to pay. You don't pay. You end up in circumstances where a vehicle has to be seized. And you talk about bailiff. And that, as the leadership of your premier sport in the country, as I said before, it would be a travesty. Yeah. I, I, we're running out of time, but I have to get this one in. <clears throat> Raymond Anderson, why do you believe that Raymond Anderson, who has been in football administration for close to 40 years, yes. who has been part of this administration and previous administrations, yes. has something different to offer, something better to offer? Very simple in my, in my case, and Cecile can speak. Raymond... I have been close enough to watch the organization. Raymond has been, over time, more like the workhorse of the organization. Mm -hmm. He's been in operations, he's handled the competitions, and the areas of responsibility that he has had mm -hmm. to carry out, he's carried them out pretty well. We can go back to collective responsibility, yes. So he has to take responsibility collectively for some of the followers because he's part of it. But what I do know is that there are so many decisions that have been taken around not just Raymond, but around numerous other persons and the executive. This is an administration that takes decisions not in a real collective way. And that is why you have a situation where, for example, the president said in response to the letter that was sent to him that he should he was advised not to respond. Then you get a response from Mr. Chung. So there clearly is a discord somewhere. There's no harmony. There's not even unison. Yeah. We're in trouble. So yeah. So so the question was asked yeah. why Raymond? Twenty seconds. Yes. So leaders emerge in crises. And as an HR specialist, I can tell you that leaders emerge. And there is, <clears throat> sorry, there's nothing wrong with a leader being a part of a team, believing that he can build on what exists or he can improve on what exists. He has all this experience. And this is something that the, uh, the real solid action team wants to do. Because we have a manifesto. We, we're done. We're ready. We're ready. We want to rebuild. We want to reposition the sport. We want to revitalize the passion, you know, get persons out. We saw what happened with the game. How you could count the number of supporters. We don't want that to happen. We want to be sure that the future of football is in the hands of not just Raymond, who can lead, but this multidisciplinary team that he has formed. And everybody's asking about the slate. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Cecile Dennis, Denzel Wilkes, it's been a pleasure speaking to both of you today on the Sports Mag Zone. Definitely. Uh, an eye-opening um, conversation we had here today and we are sure we'll be talking to you before the end of this year or who knows if Michael Ricketts has his way early January. We take a break on the Sportsman Zone. We'll be back with more. <laughs>